Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I have a video for you that has been quite frequently requested among people asking for videos and that is none other than how do you store your fragrances? How do you uh, keep your fragrances? You've probably heard around that fragrances have expiration dates, you may have heard it from a sales rep, you may have heard it around, and I'm here to tell you that it is a half truth, partially true. If you store your fragrances correctly, they can last indefinitely well past the end of your life, lifetime in many cases for uh, fragrances. So as long as you keep them properly, as long as you store them correctly, uh, then you can go ahead and you know wear them for as long as you possibly want, all right? Now there are five key tips in storing your fragrances, right? So without any further ado, let's get on to those tips. The very first culprit that we have is light. Direct sunlight is one of the chief enemies of fragrance or of perfume. Uh, this is kind of why uh, you'll see, actually, if you look kind of around the spectrum, the fragrances that generally tend to keep better are fragrances that are in darker bottles uh, overall. So they kind of reduce that sunlight going through and actually hitting the juice itself. But direct sunlight is something that you generally or definitely want to go ahead and avoid. And the reason being is direct sunlight goes through and it and it alters the chemical makeup of the fragrance. Sometimes this causes the fragrance to change colors. Sometimes it causes the fragrance to uh, lose its lose some of the notes that make up. Sometimes top notes, sometimes some of the mid notes. It depends. Generally, top notes are usually the first to go, but it does alter the chemical makeup of the fragrance, and it's chiefly important that you actually keep it out of light. So you don't want to put it on window sills. If you have it in a room, you know you don't want to. You want to make sure that sunlight isn't coming through and hitting those fragrances on it. I know that generally, people really love to show off their fragrances because some of the bottles are just absolutely fantastic, and I'm no different. Uh, but I have made some concessions and changed how I did. So if you look in some of my first videos, you'll actually see them on my dresser. Uh, I changed that around just because light was actually hitting those fragrances direct on and I actually do have two fragrances that have gone bad just because I have stored them improperly for it and you definitely can tell the difference. So light is definitely uh, a factor that affects the fragrance life of it. Keep it out of light. Towards the end of the video I'm actually going to show you kind of how I keep my fragrances uh, but as we go through and just touch upon some of the items and you know we'll get to it all right. The second point and the second item that really affects fragrances are extremes in temperatures. By extremes in temperatures, I mean it's either too hot, uh, which most people already know, fragrances, you know, they do not like extreme heat. But the other side is also true. Extreme cold is also not good for fragrances, in both of which alter fragrance chemical or fragrance molecules depending on what you're actually storing. Generally, cologne, for example, you can get away with storing in uh, colder temperatures or really cold temperatures just because it's a lot less concentrated than uh, perfume or parfum versions. But in general, you kind of want to steer away from both. So you don't want it too cold. For example, freezer, even the fridge generally, because I found the fridge to be a little bit too cold for uh, storing all fragrances. And fridges generally tend to store around, I believe, like 44 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I'm sorry, around 40 degrees Fahrenheit to, I want to say 36 to 44 around. So that in itself is a little bit too cold for fragrances um, and it can affect the composition of the molecules for it. Other side is also true, extreme heat, not good for fragrances at all. That is also another thing that uh, contributed to the downfall of two of my fragrances that I had to rebuy. The top notes were burned off. If you keep it in too hot temperature, it will Def, it will almost definitely burn off uh, some of the top notes over time. Again, it's not going to happen instantaneously, but it's going to be something that ha is a gradual process that happens over time. Whereas after a year, after two years or something like that, that is when you are going to start to notice that, hey, this doesn't really smell this, quite the same as when I first got it. So that's definitely one thing to keep in mind uh, for fragrances. And it also uh, is something that you should keep in mind in the back of your head when you're buying from online retailers or other places where you don't know how they've been actually storing their fragrances. Generally, if you get it from a major retailer or from the uh, fragrance house themselves, generally they keep these items uh, kept well. They don't keep it in extreme heat, extreme cold or anything like that. They generally tend to keep their fragrances well. By the time that they sell it to you, it's extremely fresh. 
for a lot of these online retailers, you simply don't know how they're uh, handling it or keeping the fragrances. In some cases, I'm you know, pretty sure that they may be doing just a fine job in it. But again, it is a concern for when you're you know, purchasing these fragrances online, okay? Uh, again, I'm not advocating that you not do it because I do it all the time, but just keep it in the back of your head, okay? So extreme temperatures, bad. Extreme heat, bad. Extreme cold, bad, all right? Let's move on to the next point. So number three, fluctuations in temperature. Fluctuations in temperature are one of the prime evils of keeping fragrances and perfumes and colognes at you know their tip top and tip top condition. This is why you know storing fragrances in, for example, your bathroom is such a bad idea. You go in, you have your fragrance in your bathroom. You go in, take a shower. Temperature rises up. Uh, if you're like me, I take a hot showers, so they rise up really quickly. In it, you know, bring your temperatures or bring your fragrances. Uh, base temperature up and all of a sudden you're done taking a shower and they run and they go back down if you're like me take usually one or two showers a day so this is happening over and over and over and over again it's not good for the fragrance it deteriorates the fragrance as well as you know heat and light do it's you know the jump and the, the drop in temperature is not good for the for fragrances this is also why it is cautious or you should be cautious when storing it if you are one of those who store it in a, a refrigerator. Refrigerator is generally 36 degrees to like 44 degrees and taking the uh, taking the fragrance out of the refrigerator, you know, it exposes it to, uh, you know, a sharp rise in temperature, assuming it's like 75, you know, 80 degrees in your household. So you've got that extreme rise in temperature, you know, it brings it up and the fluctuation itself again is not good for fragrances and will deteriorate them uh, if you're constantly upping and downing the temperature. I know, I know of one person who actually kept his fragrances in a fridge. The fridge broke down, and afterwards he noticed that uh, because of the breakdown, he wasn't aware of the breakdown actually. It was only when he came back from vacation, and after the breakdown, uh, some of his fragrances. I think he said about four or five of them had gone bad, had, did not smell anything like they normally smelled. And it's because the temperature in his place is around, I think it was, or his place is around 85, 90 degrees, leaves in a hot climate. And so that jump in temperature is what ruined the fragrance overall, okay? So that's definitely one thing you wanna keep aware of and you wanna keep um, conscious of, all right? And now we come to number four. The number four is, I would say, the worst possible thing for fragrances, and that is air. Air is a chief prime enemy of fragrances. When you think about it, you take the fragrance, you spray it on your skin, and or even if you spray it on the air, it evaporates quick, it's gone. Now that actually moves on to even storing it with particular bottles. Air is your chief enemy, oxygen is your chief enemy. It will burn up your fragrance quicker, it will, yes, it will deteriorate your fragrance quicker than any of the other things that I mentioned with the quickness. If you take, for example, if you were to take your fragrance, stick it in a bottle and leave it exposed to the open air, I guarantee you that when, within a couple of days that fragrance would be completely kaput, if not mostly evaporated away, all right? So uh, air is a chief enemy. So how does this actually apply to you know fragrances and fragrance bottles? Well, I've got a couple examples to actually show you. Uh, so the first example that I have is an example of a fragrance that is good or is stored well. And that is uh, Blue de Chanel from Chanel you have here. Notice that it has a cap. A cap, having a fragrance with a cap is number one, you know, chief. And it's also a reason why I don't buy fragrances that are missing the cap or anything like that. Keeping the sprayer exposed uh, to air, yes, uh, if you were to leave it out, um, it does affect it, and the oxidate, uh, the oxidation actually does get to it, you know, through the sprayer and through down there. So it can get to it, but you cover it with a cap, you're much better off, and it seals it. Okay. Other example of something that is not so good as far as a fragrance bottles go, uh, you've got the the Mugler bottles or the Mugle bottles. Uh, where the sprayer is just completely exposed to the air, okay? Not the best idea. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, they're bad or anything like that, but this, the sprayer is, can't be covered up, 
and it's always exposed to it. So, um, you know, it's not the biggest of deals because it still is very, very, very small and you, you know, may not even get that much out of it, but still exposed. Uh, and the other even bigger example of, you know, exposing your fragrance to air are, you know, some of the Guerlain bottles, right? There's a reason that I always choose to use a sprayer other than the fact that um, it's easier for application. One of When you get these Guerlain bottles, you have two options. You can either use a sprayer or you can use a twist off splash on uh, to kind of splash on fragrance. It's not only is it, you know, better in app or easier for application when you use a sprayer, but it also keeps your fragrance protected, secure, and in good straights. Um, when you take it off, you basically, I'm, I'm not even going to do it because I don't want to, but when you take it off, you're exposing it obviously to air every single time that you start splashing and applying it to your skin. So yes, again, air is an enemy. Air is something that you do not want to um, exposed to your fragrance. And number five, the final thing that we have is dirt. Dirt is also an enemy. It may not be something that most people actually think of because most people don't have to worry about dirt, right? Uh, most fragrances that you're going to come across that people talk about are sprayed on. It's only in the cases where people use uh, fragrances that are applied with a roller ball or fragrances that are splashed on at times. For example, somebody may choose to apply a splash on fragrance by taking it and putting it up against their skin and going like that. Well, the dirt in your skin, on the oils in your skin transfer into the fragrance bottle themselves when you do that and that contaminates and uh, you know breaks down the fragrance as well too. So dirt is a worry that you also have to worry about. So with those five tips out of the way, now we come to the question of, well, where should I go ahead and store my fragrances? What are some do's? What are some places that I can go ahead and keep my fragrances and they're gonna go ahead and last for a long time? Well, I've got some do's and I've got some don'ts. Let's start with the do's, all right? Now, overall arching, the one thing you wanna do is you do want to keep fragrances in cool, dark, and dry places, all right? So that's going on. Let's start with a couple places. First place, Cupboards and drawers. Cupboards, drawers, dressers, these are all good places to keep your fragrance. Uh, generally speaking, the cupboard is gonna be a little bit cooler than, I mean, not by, not by much, but it's gonna be a little bit cooler. It's definitely gonna be not exposed to direct sunlight. You're not gonna be able to get at it through it. Um, you know, keeping fragrances at room temperature is an asterisk. The reason I say asterisk in most cases, it's absolutely perfectly acceptable to keep fragrances at room temperatures. However, for somebody who lives in, say, Arizona and doesn't keep their AC on or anything like that, or who lives in a hot climate and doesn't use their AC, well, room temperature for them is, you know, 80, 85, 95 degrees, you know, in the actual house. So room temperature for them is not acceptable. I say this because I had an apartment um, that I lived in about two and a half years ago where room temperature for me, because I refused to get an air conditioner, it was the stupidest move that I ever made, but I refused to get an air conditioner and uh, whatever people would remark that the, as soon as they entered my apartment, it was like stepping into an oven. It w it literally felt like 90, 95 degrees up in there. It was it was hot. Just let's leave it at that. All right. So that is no good. So room temperature in that case, bad. Uh, but generally, room temperature you can get a keep away from. Which is, you know, 70 degrees. Uh, you know, 65, 70 degrees. You're perfectly fine going in. Uh, the ideal optimal temperature uh, to store fragrances generally you know 50 to 70 degrees think of it like almost like a wine cooler almost ish it's not the same as a wine cooler you know don't jump off that deep end but it's very very similar uh to those you know keeping rates so you can keep it at room temperature or keep it cool and you'll be perfectly fine again 50 degrees fahrenheit to 70 degrees fahrenheit uh so yes cups cupboards dressers uh closets are also good closets you know along those same lines are good for storing fragrances. You can keep them in, uh, you know, these vanity cabinets that you have. The only thing that I would caution about vanity cabinets is, and I want a vanity cabinet, them, uh, you know, myself, is the direct exposure to sunlight. Because let's face it, a lot of people, you know, we build these collections, we like showing off our fragrances, we like showing what we have. Um, the only thing that I really would really caution to you is keep it out of direct sunlight. Do not 
uh, put it in an area that has direct sunlight. If you have, you know, like a cupboard or something like that, or even shelves in, you know, your closet or anything like that, that would be highly preferable for you to actually store it in. It's not going to be in direct sunlight. You can open it up and display it to everyone. You know, it's great too. Um, but yes, there are caveats for it. Wine cooler. Wine cooler is a excellent place to store it as long as you keep it at the correct temperature, uh, you know, fluctuating anywhere between 50 and 70 degrees and you're perfectly fine keeping it in a wine cooler. I have a modified wine cooler. I will show you in the end of the video how I store my fragrances. And I also have a, um, you know, kind of like a display thing that you can go ahead and do it. All right. So uh, also, I'm sorry, one more and that's original boxes. Original boxes are absolutely fantastic to store them in. You can stick them in anywhere, you know, if they're in the box sunlight can't get to it, you know, um, then as long as you keep it at the correct temperature, you know, you're perfectly fine. All right. Now let's get on to the do nots, how not to store your fragrances or how not to get into it. The first, uh, for a do not is <laughs> definitely the bathroom. Do not store your fragrances in the bathroom. Bad idea all around. You will ruin your fragrance for numerous reasons that, you know, you can go up and top, you know, up to down, top to bottom, you name it. You know, fluctuation in temperature is the huge one, the biggie, uh, extreme temperatures, uh, the humidity is actually not good for the fragrance as well. Um, yes, if you have your, if you have the nozzle exposed and, you know, humidity, you're in a humid area, then yes, it is going to affect the fragrance as well. Uh, a little bit, a lot less of a chance, but yes, it can happen. Again, keeping those solid, you know, things in mind, just keep that into the, you know, in the back of your head. All right. Windowsill, bad idea. Sunlight, bad all around. It's generally hotter or colder by the window, by the window as well. I mean, if you go up to your window during the winter and you know put your hand next to it, it'll be a lot colder near that windowsill. As well as during the summer, if you go put your hand near that windowsill, it is a lot hotter than the rest of your apartment. So windowsill is a bad idea all around. Looks absolutely fantastic, horrible for your fragrances. Uh, they, your, they, their shelf life for it will be guaranteed to be a lot shorter than if you do not. Next, uh, like I said, direct sunlight. Anything within direct sunlight is a bad idea, so keep it away from direct sunlight. The fridge. This is, I say it's a bad idea, but it's a little bit more debatable just because it's going to depend on how cold the fridge is, how, uh, you know, the temperature that your room is at or the temperatures that the room around it is at. So, you know, if you're taking something out of a fridge that is at 40 degrees Fahrenheit and you're moving it into a room that's at, you know, 55, then, you know, who cares? Uh, you know, it's not that big of a fluctuation and it depends on the fragrance itself. But in general, I say stay away from the fridge just because, you know, it's a little bit too cold for it, uh, for some fragrances. And rather than go through each and every single one of your fragrances, you know, you know, keep it uniform. There, you know, is the possibility of humidity. Humidity also isn't necessarily good for fragrances. Um, if it, per, you know, by chance happens to, you know, mix in the fragrance or get in it any in any shape or form, it's not good for it as well. So I generally stay away from fridges, you know, for that reason. Unless you're going to keep your fridge at a higher temperature, uh, which isn't going to be good for your food. But yes, wine, which is why I kind of use wine coolers now. It's not the aspect of it being a fridge. It's not the aspect of it being a wine cooler. All we're really thinking about at this point is temperature, okay? Car. People, I know people who store their fragrances in their car. I used to as well. I used to have an extra two bottles of, you know, cologne in my car just for, you know, you never know if you're unprepared. You know, you want to top out your car spray, you know, some on you, and it's not a good place to keep your fragrance in. Uh, just like it's not a good idea to keep your you know, dogs, your pets, your kids in a hot car. It's not a good idea to keep your fragrance and cologne in a hot car as well. You're, you will uh, burn it up, destroy it, the fluctuations in temperature, the heat, especially, or the cold. Either way, not a good idea to keep it in the car. All right. So I'm going to give you a quick tour of how I keep my fragrances. So here we go. Here is kind of my setup for fragrances. As you enter my room, you're gonna see this display uh, presentation over here of fragrances. Uh, kind of is in almost like a little cross looking thing. But 
uh, it displays the fragrances in a manner that I like people to see. So you come across, and it's got usually two, three rows of fragrances here, uh, through here, and you come across, and uh, general uh, display that I'm actually happy with. Now, you're going to notice that as you pan over to the window, that the window blinds are closed. And this is generally, I had thicker ones before, uh, but there are times where I'll just like to peek out. But either way, they're closed because the sunlight does not interfere with the fragrances here. And my room is generally kept pretty dark. Uh, the light's on right now, which is why we have light, so it's a little bit easier to, um, you know, see items. So as you come over to this desk, you'll see I keep a lot of my oils here that, you know, I use to, you know, smell fragrances. You come down and you've got some samples. Uh, some of those items down here. This is generally my fragrance tinker desk. And that box contains samples that I've gone through and still have quite a few to actually go through. Now, if we pan towards this side, we're going to see uh, my fragrance cooler. And this is where I keep it. Notice that it's dark. Uh, it does have a light on it. So I'm going to go ahead and come down and pop on the light. And this is how I keep a lot of my more expensive fragrances that I have in here. Uh, you've got uh, th these and you code down. There's a lot of fragrances in the back. It's a little bit harder to see again just because it's a little bit darker here. You come down, there's a bunch of my creeds. There's uh, the uh, Terry Mugler line, uh, some Zerjoffs, and, you know, by Killians and their boxes and all that good stuff. So... I generally tend to keep those fragrances. Those are my Chanel's and some Bonds in the back, actually, too. So, yeah. So, this is generally how I keep my fragrances. Uh, so, again, sorry for the light problems, but uh, I, you know, generally keep that area pretty dark for it. So, if you have any questions whatsoever, you know, let me know. So, with that, I hope you can actually see it. I'm not sure if I can go ahead and uh, adjust the lighting or get something better that I can go ahead and shoot it with. But that is kind of the overall composition of you know, how I store my actual fragrances. So if you have any questions whatsoever, if you have any questions on, you know, storing your fragrances, feel free, send me a message or leave a comment down below and I'll be happy uh, to help, you know, to help you and to tell you if your fragrances are, you know, being stored correctly. But either way, you know, we're all here to help each other out. So feel free, ask questions, don't be shy, do whatever you gotta do. Thank you, take care of yourselves and have a great day.